All right, welcome back to Fast Gadgets. So I've been getting quite a few requests to talk about um, how exactly I've set up the theme that I use in Fedora. So I'm going to go through the two tools that I used uh, to set up and tweak the theme and get it the way I wanted to. So first thing, of course, my theme is actually uh, GNOME 3, uh, 3.18 to be exact. So I'm on Fedora 23. Uh, at some point I will be upgrading to Fedora 24, probably in the next few days, um, and it'll be uh, GNOME 3.2. But uh, for right now it's 3.18 so that's the first thing um, you can install many other desktops I also have KDE desktop running on here um, and I used to use cinnamon desktop um, I decided to learn about uh, GNOME 3 because in my opinion it's the closest to the Mac interface and usually whenever, whenever I hear somebody complaining about how the Mac interface or how GNOME 3 is, it's because they're probably more likely a Windows user and as a result um, they're used to a Windows interface and GNOME 3 is more like um, a Mac interface. But anyway, let's get started. So the first thing that I did um, when I began to set up my interface, um, if you go to folkswithhats.org, so this is step one, um, you want to install uh, their tool, Fetty. Um, and all you have to do is take this URL, which uses the curl command. Uh, basically what it does is it takes a URL and parses it um, almost as a script um, in the command line. And it will actually download the Fetty installer as well as um, give you access to the Fetty repository so that if there's any updates you will also get the updates. Now I've already done this but if I right click and copy all I have to do is go to um, a command line and paste it in. Now the thing is I'm already logged in as root because I have the pound sign here so technically speaking I really don't even need bash uh, and the SU and all that, I could just delete that and do the curl command, okay? Uh, but anyway, either way, if you're on just your user login, you'll be asked, of course, to um, log in uh, and give the root password. Okay, so that's number one. Now, once you have Fetty installed, if you go to I'm going to turn my volume down a little bit here so I don't make you guys go deaf. And I'm going to go through each step. Let me just do that again. Okay, so I press the Windows key, and I know in Linux they don't like calling it the Windows key. Uh, but anyway, on your keyboard, press the key that has a window on it. And if I do a search by simply typing Fetty, it'll come up with my uh, Fetty tool. And here I have all kinds of different options. So I have uh, a listing of applications that I can install. And you'll see that some I do not have installed, like Adobe Flash is not installed currently. Um, I did do Google Chrome. I wanted to be able to do DVD playback um, because I may have an ISO. Uh, let's see what else did I do. And it's all up to you what you want. Um, I do like Handbrake, so I'm going to install that at some point. Might as well do that now. So I'll click Install, and you'll see it's going to ask me to authenticate. So I will type in my root password. <clears throat> all right. Try again. I have a Band-Aid on my finger, so unfortunately, it's kind of difficult to type. There we go. Uh, what else do I have here? I've got um, TrueType core fonts. Uh, I do recommend installing those. This is supposed to be freeware, so freely available. Some multimedia codecs. And I decided to install Skype. Um, at some point I'm going to install Steam as well. I do have a Steam account. Oh, let's see what else. So quite a bit of apps that you can install. 
Now to get the themes that I was using, and of course you can um, download them directly from the repository, repository owners, um, Evopop, Arc, Paper, and so on. Um, I installed all of these themes. Now this one, for whatever reason, doesn't want to install correctly, but I'm not using Arc anyway, so I don't really worry about it. Uh, and then there's some tweaks that you can do. Uh, I do recommend the better font rendering. Definitely, if you have an SSD, you really need to do the Disk I.O. scheduler. Um, it does help performance on your SSD. And you can do a fancier uh, bash prompt with color, which is nice. Now, you could just use the set enforce command or edit the um, SE Linux configuration file, but I decided to uh, go ahead and set it to permissive because this is a workstation, not a server, so I'm not too awful worried. One option is once you get done doing all of your tweaks go ahead and turn it back on. It's a good layer of security so it's something to consider. So that is the FETI installations that I did. Now the next tool that you will need is actually available uh, right from the software store. So if I type in software and again I already have this installed but I want to show you waiting for the store to come up. I guess it came up. It's on a different screen. There we go. Um, all you have to do is type in tweak and the tweak tool comes up first, okay? So you want to use software and then you do a search for tweak and you're going to use the tweak tool. So now if I press the Windows key once again and I type in tweak you'll see the tweak tool show up and here in the tweak tool I've done quite a bit of stuff actually um, some asked me how did I get my dock to be transparent well it's actually not too difficult um, if you go down well first of all let's start at appearance um, because I have those themes installed I'm able to select the evil pop theme and there's a couple of options and the one I like is the light theme and then I use the evil pop icons which is what you see over here on my dock and you also see these when you launch uh, Nautilus so if I go to home here uh, let me make those larger so you can see those so that's the icon set uh, for Nautilus for the file manager I happen to like it better um, when I can see just the individual lines um, as opposed to the icons. So by turning on icons you get those features. There's a couple of extensions you'll want to install. Uh, one of the extensions that I installed was Dash to Dock. This is a really cool tool and this is the one that lets you do some interesting things. You can set dock limits, um, icon size limit of your dock, um, what the behavior does when you click on something, um, whether or not you want to animate when it shows icons, the appearance, including if you want it to, you can move the dock to the bottom if you want something that's more Windows-like, or excuse me, Mac-like. I like my dock on the side because we're a 16 to 9 ratio here on our screen so um, I prefer having the dock on the left to save the real estate. Now I could hide the dock if I want to um, but I prefer to have it visible unless um, and I'll show you that in just a second well I'll show you now if you have something and this one isn't doing it let me finish the settings here so I can change the opacity behind you see it's getting lighter and lighter actually it's not changing I don't think it'll show the change until I close it yeah it really didn't make much of a change but I have it pretty much transparent so I'll go back into settings let's go the other way will up the opacity yeah now you can see it's much more opaque um, I usually leave it pretty light just in case something's behind it and it just looks nicer anyway um, so I'm gonna close that now I'm pretty sure maybe it's on my other computer I honestly can't remember 
Um, if I have something, oh, I guess not. You can have the dock hide when a screen, uh, or rather an application, overlaps the dock, but right now mine isn't set to hide. So there's all kinds of different options. Now, including dash to dock, the other thing that I really like is the battery percentage. Um, so this one you just install and it'll show your percentage right there on the um, toolbar at the top. Where do you get these extensions? Well, it's not too awful difficult. Um, there's an option here to get more extensions. If you click that, it'll take you to the GNOME shell and there's all kinds of extensions that you can install. There's some more themes for your shell if you want. Um, just do a search to see what there is. You can include weather. And I'm going to give you an example as soon as the mini bike goes by. I put up with that all day. So if I click open weather for example, all I have to do is turn it on and I'll have weather displayed. I'm not sure where exactly it's going to be displayed. So I'll go ahead and do the install. I have no clue where my weather is going to show up. Well, it looks like it's right there. Well that's easy. I like that. I think I'll leave it on. So that's all it takes to get a theme. Now the very first time you go to the extension site, it'll warn you it can't detect uh, GNOME. These extensions are only for GNOME. So what you have to do is do a refresh. Uh, usually I hold down shift and refresh and it will show up. So it'll work correctly. Sometimes you have to close the browser and reopen, but usually not. So it's trying to detect GNOME so it can install those themes. So now I've got that theme. Um, but there's a whole bunch of them in here. You take your, your time, do a search, find out what you like. Um, there's all kinds of neat stuff in here. Dash to Dock is the one that I'm using. So, in essence, that is what I've done to customize my GNOME experience. Um, on Dash to Dock, I also did a setting. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, where is it? Show favorite, show running applications. Ah, no, not that one. Yeah, here's position if you want to change the position. So there's a ton of settings in there. Just click through them and experiment with different ones and decide what you want. One of the ones that I use is Shrink to Dash. I really like that one. Um, I also moved the show applications to the top. Uh, if you turn this off, the show applications button is missing, but I like it. So I leave it on. Uh, here we are move applications button at the beginning of the dock if you have it off by default it's on the bottom well this one's used for quite a bit so I like it at the top personally uh, so in essence that's what I did uh, to customize my experience in GNOME um, at first I really was against using GNOME but over time I began to realize that it's actually pretty cool um, I've got a couple extra screens here, so I've got virtual screens. Um, you can move apps to different screens if you want. Now I've just clicked on the actual screen. I can go back to the screen that has this in it. So overall, I think it works really well for me. I still have a little bit to learn, um, but it is definitely a smaller footprint as far as memory and services that are running and daemons than say KDE um, so it works really well for me there's still some small issues with font rendering so if I open up uh, Kden live because it is a KDE plasma application it's actually doing okay now uh, normally 
all these fonts and all this stuff here will be so tiny I can't read it. The fix for that, so once again I go to show apps. If you type in setup, no, that's not what I want. You want KDE system settings. And if you go to display and monitor, you go to scale display and use the scaling here. I've set mine for 2.5. Now what's weird is sometimes you have to move it up higher, then click OK, then open KDE and then close it and then come back here and change it to the setting you want, then click OK, then open KDE and it will actually work. Um, if I am running in KDE, these settings remain and they stay perfect. I have a video coming out on how to make changes um, to scale your KDE display perfectly for high DPI. So keep an eye out for that video. Uh, but in an essence, in a nutshell, that's what I did to set up my GNOME 3 interface. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, like and subscribe for more content, and of course, drop me a comment. And again, thanks for watching, and see you next time.